It's DJ Double right here, and today I've got one of the most exciting new artists in the UK rap scene, Big Heaths What's in the happening, building. Bro? How are we, man? I'm all right, bro. Welcome to the show. Thank you, brother. Thanks for your time, man. Tell me about the first time that you remember hearing a rap record. First time hearing, uh, when I was very young, and it probably been Kanye, uh, my brother used to always play his old albums. Okay. So we're probably talking like, late, probably college dropout, like that far back. Yeah. Um, I think it was one with Jay Z and uh, is it Never family, Let You Down? Is that family business one. No, no, no Never Let You Never Down. Down that, one, yeah, that, one, that, one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. I always remember it as a kid because it, it, it's such a long song. Yeah, it goes on forever and ever. But yeah, that one. Amazing. I've been really excited to do this interview, you know, because um, since you popped onto my radar and when when I was looking through your Spotify playlist, mm. not your music, the playlist yeah, that you yeah. posted up, bro, we've got such similar taste in hip hop, man. Big up. Just for example, yeah. I didn't know anyone else listened to Trouble Nobody by Akon. Okay, bro, right. Akon's my favorite artist ever. Really? Yeah, right. it, hands down. Yeah. Like in terms of make like the impact. Like if in terms of if you class him as a rapper, then probably he'd be the first record I heard. But in terms of make like growing up, it's so weird because there's a kid from Cambridge. I can't really relate to Akon and like the subject matters. <laughs> his, his songwriting and the way he makes a catchy. Bang. You know what? In my opinion, mate, people like him and Fifty have just set the bar for like catchy. Rap, do you know what yeah. I mean? That's crazy, man. Yeah, the most, judge said, don't most trouble definitely. Nobody. Don, 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 don. Absolutely. Yeah, mum. Uh, listening to the Smells of Beef mixtape, mm. I can really tell, like, that you're really digging through, like, you're into your hip-hop music. Yeah, well. man. Which record, which hip-hop record was it that helped you get over your stutter when you were younger? It, again, it goes back to Kanye, mate, because he, cause, cause he, he has that... I, I, I probably couldn't say a particular song mm -hmm. but I mean in terms of like that whole like believe in yourself ego that he had back then when now it's gone out of control <laughs> but like back then bro it was kind of like believe in yourself and have that attitude that like you can do what you want to do in it so pro probably like um it must have been like a one one of the joints from the old ones but again mate just that whole kind of era that he was in then mate was so like self-empowering mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that really what was the first beat that you ever wrote to as a rapper? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> it was the baitest one. It was uh, Who Shot Ya? Oh, okay. One, yeah, but it's just, it just makes me laugh because it's the baitest beat. That's a good choice, but, um, though. But yeah, man, like, I, I, I come from very, like, um, I like to think of myself as, like, I know my hip-hop, like, my old hip-hop. And when I was younger, I used to, I was a proper, like, backpacker kid. I used to love me my boom back, like, proper love it. Yeah. So I feel like I come from that era, like, I appreciate proper music and proper rap and when it like even big like big big for me was i mean i'm i'm, I'm upset that I, I wasn't around when he was big but i feel like even though he was commercial at the time it was still proper hit like rap do you know what i mean absolutely bro. um but yeah it's mad that like you coming from cambridge like i'm mm. i'm from an area just outside of brighton okay and they're like Cambridge isn't like the hub for hip hop. Yeah, Where exactly. I'm from isn't the hub for yeah, hip hop, yeah, yeah. but we we seem to find these like proper gems, isn't it? It's mad you say this, bro, because I've got some mates from Brighton, and when I think about the areas in the UK right now that are doing real hip hop, mm -hmm. Brighton's smashing it, man. There's so many people there, and I feel like high focus records yeah, exactly, is in Brighton. Exactly, man, exactly. And I feel like there's it's these cities like that that people don't expect it from that are maybe late to the trends that London sets with all the new waves of music. That we're kind of it's a good it's, it's a blessing and a curse that we're kind of still stuck in the past. Mm -hmm. Listen to like proper rap, like, um, like growing up from Cambridge, like uh, Dirty Dyke. You've heard of yeah, Dirty yeah, Dyke? Yeah, yeah, man. Like Dirty Dyke was a legend back right. back home, man. Like that, that, he's so sick. And like again, he's new, but he's using proper big drums, boom bappy beats. You know what I mean? So still doing bits now as well. Exactly, yeah, bro. Now yeah, mum. It's crazy. I heard your murder freestyle. Mm. Again, another one from the Smells Like Beef mixtape. Clash the cough. Brother, can we be in agreement that that's the greatest UK rap record ever Mile, made? bro. Mile by mile. Mate, that, that, that beat, go. as soon as you hear it, it's like, ooh. Yeah. It's crazy. I knew we were going to get yeah. along, bro. I knew we were going to get along. Uh, you opened for Nas in 2017. Yeah, mad. How did that come around? Uh, <laughs> um, I was in Liverpool at the time. I was working uh, closely with a promoter up there and he'd like heard some of my stuff and he wanted just to like, he's one of these guys that froze in the deep end, isn't it? Like he hadn't really gave me any gigs. Mm -hmm. And then this, 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 this is the God's honest truth. I was in bed one morning, slept in, <laughs> my phone went and it was like, you are supporting Nas next week. And I was like, what? 
And I called him, obviously, and he's so busy that he, he didn't fucking answer. I was like, great. Didn't answer, didn't answer, didn't answer the whole day. And I'm thinking, like, what's going on? One of them what's... guys. Yeah, innit? <laughs> you back, he's like, yeah, yes, lad. I was like, yo, what's happening? He was like, yeah, so next week you're supporting Nas. I was all like, Nas, Nas. He was like, Nas. And then it happened, bro, and it was crazy. Yeah. Amazing. Was that, Amazing. So was that your first live show? No, no, no. But like the fir first, like, like significant. Yeah, moment. do you know what I mean? But it, it, it was like the first night where the next day, like, you wake up and you're like, that actually happened last night. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Crazy. Madness. Did you get to meet Nas? Yeah. Um, very, very quickly. Yeah. But I did. So it's always so, like that on show. And, day, and also, 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 I had, I technically, technically, he touched the mic after me on it because I was on stage first. So, oh, so technically, yeah. I gave the mic to him. So you literally shared the mic with Nas. <laughs> Crazy, well, he, man. He shared the mic with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, a, yeah, that's a good way to look at it, man. Yeah. Tell me about um, signing to Polydor. Mm. The lead up to it and, and the day you signed. Talk to me about all of this. Yeah, yeah. So um, I've been doing this for a long while now. Like I've, I've took all, all my old movies I've really took them off, off, off the internet. But I think um, it goes to the point last year where I really want to take it to the next level. And I feel like I just needed some help kind of linking up the right people and coming up with the right scheme. Um, and I supported Freddie Gibbs after I did Nas in December. Yeah. December last year. Yeah, so, mate, you know what? It was this time last year. And DJ Semtex came along uh, just to watch because he, he, he heard about me and he bit my face like, mate, he smashed it. And then he obviously works at the other record labels. They got talking and like, this industry is so small that people talk in it. Mm -hmm. And then these guys got in contact and the team that I'm with now, when I met them, I just knew it was right. Like, you know, I know everyone says it, but you do know when something's right. Yeah, like, yeah, you feel yeah. the team's right. And like, they just believed in my vision. Like, I'm not a joke, but I like not taking stuff too seriously, mm -hmm. which I think in this, in this game is quite hard these days to like find someone like that. And also, as I say, I've got a love for old rap, which again these days is so hard to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Interesting, you said about like not taking things seriously, mm. but you're not a joke. I noticed uh, a bit of the PR campaign, like for example, um, is it Plan where you did yeah. the gymnastics <laughs> and you were doing the backflips? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of your image and the way you look, it's yeah, not, yeah. it's not a traditional. Yeah, like course. you wouldn't be like, this guy is a traditional rapper. Yeah, does that yeah, make yeah. sense? But the music you make yeah, is yeah. very serious, yeah, like yeah. real hip hop. Exactly. How do you find it kind of balancing between keeping your sense of humour there mm. but making serious music and not being taken for yeah, a joke? Yeah. Does that make sense? Like no, not bro, especially in today's climate, yeah, yeah see where you've got huge, memes man. blowing up and getting exactly. record deals. People just at a glance could mistake you yeah, for yeah. like a comedy act well, mate, or one, a character. Does that make sense? Like, listen, I've got that my, my whole time. I've been spitting bars. But I think now, like, I've... There's there's a fine line between not taking yourself seriously, as you said, like being a, a complete joke. Uh -huh. And I think for me, I, I, I quickly realised that my music's serious, but the content and the way I act around outside of my actual songs, it can be jokey. And also, I, I love being funny. Like, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love you having... You tell a, you've got yeah, a good yeah. sense of humour. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm in this game to have a good time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people in this game take themselves so seriously that... All these like screw face rappers and that. I'm just like, bro, like, do you do you enjoy being a rapper? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like, but for me, like, I think as you can see, like, my music's serious, but it but it is hard having the image I have. Obviously, like, a fat guy with glasses, like, it's not like the most street cred like look. Mm -hmm. But I love that because I feel like it makes me different. And also, bro, it's me. Like, yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to be someone else. That is me. I'm you. You. I am what you see in it. I saw you in Distortion's pull-up video. Yeah, you look yeah, like you're yeah. having a time yeah. of your life, bro. Bro, that was a crazy <laughs> night. Like, you know, that was the first time I've actually felt like a rapper. Like, there was, like, loads of, like, women. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, drink. Yeah. I was like, woohoo. Amazing. So, is there anything of you in Distortion in the pipeline? Yeah, we were talking, man. There's, there's a couple things penciled in for next year, man. Like, he, he makes bangers. Like, not, not necessarily hip-hop. Yeah. But the guy's certainly got, like, a, he's got his own sound made of, like, fully, like, club bangers. Mm -hmm. And obviously, in this day and age, like... You do need them kind of crossover songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. 100%, mm. man, definitely. It's a crazy night, bro. Are there any, any other surprise cameos coming up? Because I can tell <laughs> you're, in, you're, in, you're in the mode now. Uh, cameos, no. But some great, <laughs> great content coming. Okay. Trust me. Right, is this, so is this all around the Lonely EP? Yeah, we've got, we've got a couple more things to push that. Just, 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 I mean, I say I love having a good time, so I love putting out like funny content. Like, mm. it's just, I just find it br just great, isn't it? 
So I mentioned it a couple of times. The smells of beef mixtape mm. was uh, was that was that your first mixtape that you put out? Like a second, much older project. actually. It was like something I put out like t- nearly like eighteen months ago, now, like two years ago. And it was man, it was one of them like bedroom mixtapes. Mm-hmm. Like I'd ripped everything from YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, but but as I say, like, you have to do that when you're there, like, in your skin, and like you haven't got much to go for, and like you're like self. Mate, doing the song yourself or cook, mate. That whole thing was done by me. Right. Mixed, obviously, it wasn't mixed very well. But I, I, I was on like YouTube every night, like watching mixing the tutorials and like I'm on the side having my own music up. Yeah. And I think that that that, that to me, I love that. Like, obviously, it doesn't sound as good as as the new stuff's mixed, but it makes me very like um, appreciative. I feel like a lot of people are always like a bit surprised of how like n- not kind I am, but how like grateful I am. Right. Like when 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 the engineer now like who mixes my stuff is so sick. He's like, bro, like it's blessed. Like, I'll, I'll thank him, like, bro, it sounds. So he's like, blessed, like it's cool, isn't it? like that's what I do. But I'm like, yeah, but it's sick because obviously I know, I know what it, what it, what, how how it was like when people like that weren't there. Uh-huh. Um, but as I say, like I, f- I, f- I think that makes me a different artist because I'm very just like humble. I don't, I don't, I don't love all the uh, this like crazy insta world we live in. Yeah, I hate that stuff. I'm not a fan. No, if so. I'm honest. How does the way that you approach the Lonely EP compare to the way that you made the Smells of Beef mixtape? Now, obviously, you mentioned that one was yeah. recorded, engineered, ripped yeah. from YouTube all by yourself. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. So talk to me about how you feel with the difference. Yeah, I think the two. Smells of Beef, mate, had no, like, had no plan. It was just, <laughs> like, fully six-month Ryan, random beats. And I was like, yeah, we're just going to whack it in one. With this one, obviously, like, with the team I got now, we really wanted to, like, make a statement with it and like this first EP of mine is really like painting the picture of who I am and I really like the main the main like idea of it was that just to show people by listening to it I feel like you have a great understanding of who I am and it sets me up going forward so I kind of like it it, it, it was more of a plan with that one mm-hmm. yeah yeah the intro is very hard hitting yeah yeah and it's you don't often get introductions to an artist like that like the f- it's the first thing you hear on the new project. Mm. And I mean, you go deep, man. You go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, like we learn a lot about you yeah, yeah. and kind of family life and growing up and stuff. Was it a tough choice to put like that much of yourself into the first moment it's that weird. people are gonna it's hear? It's weird, bro. People always ask that like, do, do, you, do, do, do you like being, so not, not honest, but yeah, do you like being like so open with it? I've always been open. I've never, I've never been someone to hold things back. Mm-hmm. And I feel like my favorite artists and rappers are ones that do that as well. Like it's nice to feel like you you, you pr- fully understand someone, and I feel like a lot of people they put on this facade like they're all about health, like mental health, that like everything's okay and that. I think every now and then it's fine just to say like stuff shit and like how, actually how things are, and because everyone goes through bad times, and if you're being honest with you, it, like people can relate to that more, innit? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah, obviously, I, I I do say some deep deep stuff in it, but it's all true. So like to me, it's it's quite therapeutic for myself to be able to put that out there because I don't normally talk about this stuff with most people mm-hmm. apart from when I'm in the booth so I've been like and also bro, you're talking about it with everybody yeah, like, yeah exactly <laughs> like, bro like, I had like my certain family members like obviously when they heard it like some some were like why well, is it sick like well done but the whoa like it's quite deep but I was like that's how I feel like if you don't like it obviously it's aimed at you isn't it do you know what I'm saying yeah yeah, um, yeah. but yeah man I I, I think for me as an artist, I'm always open, always, mm-hmm. always. It's good to hear though. Yeah, yeah. Switch sides with Gecko. Mm. Why is Gecko the only feature on the whole project? I didn't, I didn't want to have, uh, I didn't want to be one of these like new artists that just gets five songs and five big people on it. Mm-hmm. That's me's whack. Why Gecko of everybody? Why Gecko of everybody? Uh, one, he liked the song, which obviously helps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two, bro, I think people forget. Obviously, Gecko now is on this new like harmony Afrobeat vibe kind of thing, mm-hmm. but the kick was a, a spitter. Yeah, I like remember. when like K Coat was bringing him through, like, and that was when I first USG heard of it. Hey, bro, exactly. And uh, I said to him when, when he heard it, I was like, I, I, I don't want, I don't necessarily want your old, but I knew I want some better, better mix of it. And he couldn't have done it better. Like it has bars in it, and then he also rides the beat in his way he does now. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he just fitted the beat so well. Like it was sick, man. It was sick. I noticed actually a lot of fan comments, and I felt the same way as well. It was like, oh, okay, well, Heath's going on like yeah, that. He's bringing yeah. bringing the old gecko yeah, back. Man. Like, yeah, 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 we're, yeah. Exactly. We're a fan of that. Who would be your ultimate collaboration, <laughs> dead or alive? Acorn. If they'd said to you, you can have anyone ever on air, who would it be? Acorn. Akon. I feel like <laughs> you said it at the start that but he's your favourite so artist. So I kind of feel like, like I don't know, like 
obviously like some rappers rappers if it was like Big L or someone like that but Oh, in terms of that's like a, a sick song, big L. In terms of a song, mm-hmm. if it was bars, pack big or L, mm, so hard. Probably L because the guy's punch sign just made me laugh so I'd, much. I'd choose big L over two. Yeah, and it, but but like in terms of song, Akon man, I would make a banger. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's cringeworthy, man. You, in fact, funnily enough, you're the second artist in two weeks to tell me the yeah, exact yeah. same thing. I love him so Akon's much. Akon's got something, man. There's something yeah, about him. Uh, Lonely, mm. my personal favorite from the EP. Thank you, bro. Is that um, inspired by Akon's record? Oh, by I, knew, I knew you'd say that. No, it's not. Maybe subconsciously it is, but not 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 on post at all. No, I mean, um, it doesn't sonically it doesn't yeah, sound yeah, anything course. like him. Of but course, but he, um, he had a hit record of the same name. But yeah, yeah, not not. Not really, no. Do you have a favourite track on the EP? Yeah, that. Lonely. Lonely, yeah, Lonely. Yeah. I think it just, when I made it, it felt so right. And it was like, it was truthful. It bangs. It's got like, as I, said, as I keep saying, mate, it's got very old school, big drums in it. Not like Ooh. trap drums. Like, bro, I love trap. Like some two joints in there are trap really, but Lonely for me, like it's such a, it's such a perfect old school, new school beat. There's nice, dr- um, nice keys in it. It's sick. I love it, bro. It's a very, I put it in my, Best record to date, like in terms of something that I'm proud to have said. Like, if someone says to me, like, what's your favorite song you've made? Like, it's out, that one. <sighs> yeah, man, 100%. I'd agree. I yeah. think I'd agree. I love the way you said your favorite song you made that's out. Yeah, exactly. Because I know you've got another project <laughs> in the way. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss this in a second. The video for Lonely, mm. um, I thought it was great, man. I Thank mean, the s- wherever, whatever location that it was. was my like, location. I don't even, what was that building? Bro, so it was like, um, what was it? It was a basically an old. Theater, um, is what it used to be, okay. But when we went there, bro, it had like um, it looked like an old cooler, mate. It was Matt, <laughs> bro. I did the same thing. I turned up and was like, bro, this looks like cod. Like, yeah. I did the same, bro. Oh, so weird you said that. I did the same thing. Um, I so weird said that. Um, but yeah, it was weird, mate. It was like an old theater, but it was like concrete and it was un weird thing is, it was underground. So from the outside, it just looked like a building, like here, like an, 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 an but then you go downstairs, and there's ramp and it opens up, and you're like, whoa. Yeah, it's crazy, mad. Uh, a lot of the parts of the set show mm. little clippings. I think there was there was pictures of Tupac in there. Yeah, I yeah. think I saw half of Nate Dogg's face, but it was the bottom of yeah, half. Yeah, you so did. Was you it did. Nate Dogg? Yeah. yeah, you did. I, I you did. did. It was literally just like that. I rate that. You, like, you saw that. Was you that saw Nate Dogg? Yeah, it was, Ice it was. Cube was there. So like, yeah. was this your influence on saying? Yeah, man. Which like, um, I said I wanted my like room as a kid, basically when I was like fourteen. Resembled, didn't it? And um. When we were doing the artwork, there is the only thing I was annoyed that quickly I'll say. We got <laughs> hey, go on, shoot them down. This is brilliant. We, we had uh, mate, we had a little picture of little Kim on my bedside table. Yeah. Which we didn't get in the end in the final shot. Right. But it was so funny just to have a like, little Kim <laughs> on on that's a little picture. Um but yeah, like I feel like all the all the, I I tried to pick artists that had a massive influence me as a kid. Uh, and yeah, they are all from the States and quite like obvious ones. But as I say, when you're from Cambridge, obviously when the first people you listen to are the obvious ones, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, man. I like the way that your visuals for this project are so strong. Plan being mm. the, the next track on the, yeah, on yeah. the project. And bro, it's been a while since like a serious music video has actually made me laugh out loud. Thank you, bro. But that cut in the middle Thank where you, the music bro. stops, Thank like, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, bro, like, if no, I was drinking, sick. I probably would have spat yeah. it out, man. It was, <laughs> no, it was sick. It was a funny moment. Is that another video that you planned the treatment yeah, for? Yeah, or was yeah. that yeah. other, other nah, bro, me. Ooh, me, baby. So you're like a proper funny guy. Mate, though, I, really? I love, I, I love it, mate. I've always like, always loved comedy. Like, I've always loved that that side of it. But as I say, there's always that fine line. But yeah, man, I, I'm very heavily into my like. I love doing as much as I can. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes yeah. it's bad. People are like, he's man, don't just worry about that. But now, nah, like, because I know I'm so different, I have to be careful how I come across. Uh-huh. And sometimes people don't get it. And only I know the best how I come across because I've yeah, experienced yeah. 22 years of being called stuff. So I know how I come across. So I know like the the line of humour has to be like the right way. <laughs> man. So, yeah. But, yeah, man. The outro mm. is it's kind of like the back end. I mean, this sounds like the most obvious thing to say. It's like the back end of the intro, really, yeah. because it's kind of back obvious. into like the introspective. Yeah, like, bro. Just bars. Mm. One one line stuck out to me that you had six houses in five years. Yeah, yeah. Why did you move so much? Uh, so when I was like 14, 15, my parents divorced. Oh. And then I was in, yeah, Henry Johnson. Um, and then I yeah, moved with my mum. And then I was at my grandparents after that. Then I was at uni, halls. Then second year uni, I was in like a different house. Third year, different house. 
Year after that, Liverpool for a year. And now I'm back here. So I've been been about, man. Nowhere feels like home. Like, I know it's such a weird, like... But in a way, I got to the point where I've moved so much that I like it. Like it, I feel like humans need change, don't it? And when you mm. have change, it, it, like, makes your brain, like, start again. Like, it's weird. Like, when I go somewhere else, I get this fresh buzz about me. I can't explain it. People always say to me, I can't explain it. So like I moved to Liverpool, man. I felt like a, a reborn man. Like, it was yeah, weird. Yeah. And I was like, yes, lad. But, like, it was sick. Um... <laughs> But yeah, man, I just feel like I've I've, I've lived in so many places, man. Like it's crazy. Mm. Stimulating, I think. Yeah, to a new area, definitely. definitely. What were your expectations when you put the EP out? For people like myself to relate to it, and that's all I really want in this game is for people like me who need someone to listen to that speaks out of truth and give them gives gives them like the belief that listen to me. As you say, I I don't look like a rapper, but I love what I do, and I feel like. There's so many things in this life we're well with. But like, you can't do that because of that. I was like, man, you can honestly do anything you want. Mm-hmm. Just work harder and you'll be, one day you'll be good enough, isn't it? And I feel like for me, it was just giving about, giving that out, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, man. Yeah. Uh, you brushed quickly on it earlier. Mm. So let's talk about what can you tell me about the next project? It's mad. <laughs> so obviously with this one, didn't this want to drop? like five bangers you need to paint the picture a bit more myself yeah of course so the intro and outro like they're not like songs they're more like bars as you said EP2 mate the lock's off bro it's like this is just five six bangers the second EP is crazy like I, oh I can't wait to drop some is stuff is it finished? nah but like it's just got like four basically it pretty much is but I want one more track on there that's a bit more like lonely a bit more of a like a big Piano, Dre, kind of like, mm. yeah. I can't wait. But I mean, I'm going to Helsinki next week with the guy that's probably made the whole, nearly the whole thing of it, and that's the main goal is to get this, sort of, like, get that song. And I know Hel- we'll have wait, it. But step back a minute, Helsinki, Helsinki, bro. That's, okay. bro, that's where it's at. Right, that's where it's at. Elaborate. Why, why Helsinki? So I got put in with a session with a producer out there called Hank. He's the greatest. I'll be just like, you know, when you meet someone, you click. Yeah. Like yeah. You can't explain it, mate. Like I was in, a, I was doing uh, one day with him here, and we did like the lead song off the second EP, and obviously the, the whole team were like, mate, this is mad. Uh, let's get you back out there. So I was out there like last month and made three bangers. Mate, we just worked so well together. He he has this. Mainly, he's a pop producer. But he can make rap because obviously mm. he, when it comes to rap, he has this big sound. Like, it's just big, like it just sounds heavy and just fat. Um, and then yeah, it went so well. So I'm going back out there just before Christmas next week. So yeah, it's amazing. It's sick. I mean, it's a weird place, but it's brilliant. <laughs> uh-huh. It's been a pleasure, bro. Love, bro. I'm loving Honestly. the EP. Thank you, mate. It's out now for everyone that wants to listen yeah. to it. And uh, definitely looking forward to what's Thank coming you, next. Bro. Do you have a release date for the next project? Nah, but it's. Like March, really. Pending. Like March, yeah, March. Buffering. Pending. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's DJ Double here with Big Heath. Thank you, bro.